What up, y'all, DC Fago guy? Today, I wanted to make a video about Mike E. Clark. It's so fucking good to see him back at the gathering, to hear Violent J say that they're working in the studio. As of right now, the gathering, the final day of the gathering, is happening. Mike E. Clark performed last night. He got a lot of fucking love, which is awesome to see. Um, obviously, in the infomercial, Jay had mentioned that they were working in the studio again with him. Pug Ugly is out, and I'm just speculating that track two and three are produced by Mikey Clark. I'm getting some serious Jekyll Brothers Malenko with a sprinkle of Death Pop, maybe a shot of Beverly Kills and Terror Will vibes from Abracadabra and Pug Ugly. I just hear Mikey Clark production on there. Sadly, we don't know if that's the case. They didn't put production notes on Pug Ugly, which... Is super fucking stale. They did the same thing with Yum Yum's Lore. Um, obviously, that was supposed to be released at Christmas of 2020 to make up for Yum Yum Bedlam getting pushed back. It then wouldn't come out until March 5th. Uh, there's production on there from One Man Crew. He he produced Bewitching, which that, that song really has grown on me. I know in my review for it, I said I didn't really care for the production on it, but it's grown to me. Um... And, you know, I've recently learned some staleness about One Man Crew. I won't deep dive too much into that, but I guess he kind of got screwed over as well. They didn't give him the proper credit, obviously, on that album. And, you know, um, there's, there's some bad blood there. It really just kind of reinforces me not really agreeing with the business side of shit going on at Psychopathic Records right now, which it doesn't make me hate ICP. It just makes me let go of the hate for other artists that have left and kind of given their reasons for leaving. I understand their point of view now. Uh, but back to talking about Mikey Clark. I'm so fucking glad to see him working with the clowns again. I hope they do right by him. That's kind of why I brought up One Man Crew. I, I hope they don't fuck over Mikey Clark. And I say that because I've watched an interview from Neil P on the subcast. I will link it in the description. If you have not seen this Mikey Clark interview, do yourself a favor and go check it out. The shit is really good. He tells a lot of great stories about the early days with ICP um, and the fact that Dead Body Man almost didn't exist. That shit almost fucking disappeared off the face of the planet. Thank God for the quick reflexes of Mikey Clark. Again, if you haven't watched the interview, go check it out. He also talks about when they were first setting down to record Great Malenko. Like, he gave Jay a bunch of fucking beats to go, like, listen to and, and write to some of them. And he comes back and Mike's like, yo, how, which beats did you write to? And he's like, all of them. So it's a great interview with some great stories and unfortunately some sad truths in there about Mikey Clark. The biggest one is, of course, which should make everybody say, fuck Kid Rock, if you weren't already saying it before, um, Mikey Clark getting screwed out of credits for the song All Summer Long, which, you know, is the mashup of uh, Werewolves of London and um, Sweet Home Alabama. Well, I didn't, I don't think he put my name on it. That's the, that's, that's the kicker. Like that. Oh, hurts. damn. Yikes. <laughs> yeah. Like I, I brought that, that's, that wouldn't even happen. But, and then when you just, you don't even get, you know, it gets, I don't know. It's sad. I, like my, but my name's not like, go look on the greatest hits record. My name's not on it. Um, on the album it came on, I don't think, I don't think you can find my name. You know, he went to Kid Rock studio with basically his like take on the werewolves of London, which was originally supposed to be a gathering track. We all know that Jay had mentioned this in the um, interview that Chris Hansen conducted with them. I think it was a shoot interview. Um, you know, so Jay mentions it there. Mikey Clark confirms it in this interview. Um, but, you know, he got completely fucked over by Kid Rock. And he uses that point in the interview to kind of talk about if that basically if somebody's out there wanting to become a producer to really cross your t's and dot your i's and really really read what you're signing you just have to be real careful you know you gotta you gotta be careful and um i'm not always very careful it was my fault that i didn't have the um paperwork right you know that you like you have to really look at the paperwork the the contracts what you're being handed but I mean, Bob and I go back, 
you know, 1990, yeah, 89, yeah. you know, like I've been with that guy forever. So, you know, I didn't see it coming, but is there some great advice that he gives there about, you know, getting into this business and it, it basically clicked on a light for me flashing back to when ICP and Mikey Clark fell out around the time of Bazaar Bazaar. Mike Clark's Funhouse Studio was the spot. We took a time out away from everything else around us and concentrated only on Bazaar and Bazaar. Unfortunately, they would be the last full-length album we do with Mike Clark for a while. After the four tracks Mike did for us on the Dark Lotus album, we'd stop working with him altogether. On Mikey Clark and Us Parting Ways, I say this. To make a very long story short, we just couldn't meet eye to eye on a business, or even I guess a personal level anymore. And it was in the best interest for us and him to go on our separate ways. Flat out, we fell out. He'd probably say we changed, we say he changed, or maybe we both changed. Who knows? It's not worth the speculation. We're both happier now and doing excellently, especially in the diamond rain. Them days were the shit to us, but we like these days better. That's how it rests with us. I hope Mike always has success in what he does, and I have no doubt he will. All the good days we spent together will not soon be forgotten, and for that, much love. I guess we first started to fall off with Mike about halfway into making Bizarre and Bizarre. It just seemed to us like things were getting harder and harder for us to work together in the studio. Some of it had to do with the business disagreements we kept running into, but it was more than that also. Finally, for the first time in our career studio with Mike sucked. And I have no doubt Mike felt the same way about us. So, you know, in the book, Behind the Paint, they mention, like Jay mentions, he doesn't bring it up. He like grazes over it in the audiobook. I was wanting to use audio, but unfortunately you guys have to listen to me narrate it, which hopefully I do great. <laughs> but, you know, it, it made that light click on for me that that was where the business side that Jay was talking about was coming up. You know, Mikey Clark watched everybody else get rich while he stayed broke. They can get you. And for many years, from 2000, when I quit ICP for the first time, for like five years, I was really salty. And I was very upset um, because of, um, you know, everybody got rich and, I was, you know, you're still broke. That's a hard pill to swallow. But then you have to let it go because it was starting to, to eat me, kill me. Where I was, uh, and then I got a really good manager, and he said, "Listen, you can't count other people's money. They've got the money. You fucked up, you know." And you know, I know a lot of people could come on here and go, "Well, that's on him for not reading and you know getting contracts signed." But you know, also here you have somebody making amazing beats, making amazing music, and you guys mesh and click so well for for that to even happen super fucking sucks and it's super fucking stale obviously they're working together again i don't know how extensively they're planning to work but you know i really hope to see mike stick around for a while i know a lot of people are excited to hear that news and they're really hoping that mikey e. clark produces the sixth i myself am still kind of firm on uh, kuma for the sixth i think kuma would knock it out of the fucking park I'm also not opposed to a Mike E. Kuma collaboration. Get the two of them in there together to work on beats together. Have Kuma do some of the mixing and mastering. Have Mikey e. Clark do part of the mixing and mastering. You know, Jay has already said that the sixth is supposed to be basically just another Hell's Pit and Shangri-La, or another Wraith, if you will. So, assuming that we're getting another Shangri-La and Hell's Pit, there's no reason for one of them to produce one of them and the other produce the other and then work together mixing you know just doing amazing shit i think this is set up to be something fucking fantastic happening but i wanted to make this video real quick for anybody who did not know that little bit of history about mike e clark you know the sad truth about it make sure you go check out that interview because it's it's you know it's a great interview some great stories in there and again some sad truths about mikey e. clark and the business side and really kind of opens like why he stopped working with ICP for a while. He finally like let go of that, that you know, uh, bitter feeling that he had 
they eventually would you know come back into the fold and work with them on the tempest uh the part that really baffles me is looking at the timing of when all summer long came out and knowing that after mighty death bop he mikey clark actually went and worked with kid rock again like I don't, if it was me in that situation, I don't know that I could, but that just shows you how fucking dope Mikey Clark is. He put those personal feelings aside to, to still go out there and do work with Kid Rock. I mean, obviously, he made money out of it, but um, yeah. I hope that this video is something that helped kind of educate you guys a little bit on a little bit of ICP history with Mikey Clark. And again, hopefully, they do right by Mikey Clark and the relationship lasts. For the rest of their lifetimes because they make amazing music together obviously anyway thank you guys for watching leave your thoughts down below what you think about this video and again go check out that interview it's it's a great listen it's a great watch and uh, uh, like everybody else i'm super glad to see mikey clark back thank you guys for watching i'll see you guys next time